Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to CHE205. This is chapter 3, section, I believe, 3.5. Today I'll be talking about matrices and matrix operations, and hopefully we can wrap up this section. And uh, I think in the next video I'll be talking about how we can use a spreadsheet to do matrix and vector operations. All right. So back to our knowledge from high school, matrix is a uh, list of numbers in an ordered manner. Um, so we're going to talk about uh, rectangular matrices, could be like square matrices. We have a certain number of rows and columns where we have numbers in them. This is a uh, generic picture of a matrix. We have, let's say, M columns. The first index for every in entry is the column index, and the second, uh, sorry, is the uh, is the row index, and the second index for every entry here is the uh, column index. So, like in this, when I look at this entry, it says this entry is sitting at row two, column two, or this entry is sitting at row two, column n. Right? This guy is sitting at row m, as in Mary, and column n, as in Nancy. All right. So the dimension of this matrix is m rows and n columns. Let me just stop the sky. Okay. So that is what we call matrix, right? Um, uh, there are different ways to represent matrix. Uh, another way to represent the matrix is, uh, let's say we look at this one. Uh, this is matrix B. And it, it appears to be a column vector, but actually it's not. So because every row of it, this row we have u, but you would think that u is just one number. In fact, u is another matrix, is another vector, but we get transpose of it. So like you can think of, you can think of this row as a vector, and instead of having, you know, m by n columns, I can have only m rows, and every row is a vector. Okay, so this is one vector, this is another row vector, and maybe this is another row vector. So I can put the row vectors in a column fashion, and um, and then uh, this would be again a matrix, because every row of it is is a row vector. So if you expand that, you get the same picture. Now, uh, if if u is a column vector, then you have to transpose it, make it a row vector, and put it in a row, right? V again is another column vector. We transpose it or put it as a row. Okay, uh, depending on how um, what the form of the vector is, we have to either put here U V W or U transpose V transpose W transpose. Depending on again if U V and W is row or column vector. Okay, and this is another form of it. Like uh, now you can you can think of this matrix as columns. This is one this is one vector, this is another vector, and this is another vector. So you can think of this matrix as combination or an ordered list of column vectors, right? So like D is a column vector, E is a column vector, F is a column vector. So overall this matrix would seem like a matrix of three column vectors, and every column vector has like a bunch of elements in it. So if you put them together, then C would be again matrix square matrix or maybe a rectangular matrix. Uh, operation in matrices, you have to, when you do the summation of matrices, uh, the summation goes element by element, like element ij, row i, column j of matrix C would be identical to row i, column j of matrix A plus row i, column j of matrix B. So you have to add the elements correspondingly, okay? That's how we add the matrices. Multiplication by scalar. If you multiply a matrix by a scalar, like if I get matrix A here and multiply by uh, a scalar, that a scalar is multiplied by every element here. So um, an example could be, so think of this, just copy paste it here. Let's have a matrix here. I want to multiply it by two. So two times, this is a, oops. So to the scale, I'm going to multiply it by uh, this matrix. So then the, the, the result would be, uh, oops, the result would be, so you get every element of it and multiply by 2. So this is going to be 
two times this. All right. Let me see if I can expand it like that. That's right. And then expand it, drag it down. There you go. So you get every element of this matrix and multiply by two, you get this. So this is scalar times matrix, right? Okay, so go back to the um, section 3.6.2. Transpose of a matrix. So transpose of a matrix, you read a matrix as rows and write it as columns. Like in this case, uh, to get the transpose of a matrix, you clear this up and clear this up. If I want to make this guy transposed, then you can read it. You can read the columns and write it as rows, or you can read rows and write it as columns. Either way is fine and would be identical. So I'm going to read columns and write it as rows. The first column is one, two, two. I'm going to write it as one, two, two. Okay, I write it in a, in a row fashion. And then the next column is two, three, one. So I write it as two, three, one. The next column is 2, 1, 1. So I'm going to write it as 2, 1, 1, and so forth, right? So read columns, write it as rows. You can do the other way around. You can read rows and then write it as columns. So in that case, we do 1, 2, 2. This is 1, 2, 2. And then 2, 3, 1. This is 2, 3, 1. And then 2, 1, 1. This is 2, 1, 1. You see that? So both ways are fine. And that's what it says here. Okay, so uh b is a transpose means the same thing so uh in in, in the index form um the ij element of b matrix would be ji element of a matrix so you just flip the order of uh, the the row and column index so ij will be the ji element of a matrix um uh, you have special matrices a square matrix as i said number of rows and columns are the same Diagonal matrix is a matrix whose elements are non-zero along the diagonal. Everywhere else, you get zero. Like, if I want to make this diagonal, then I should see something like this. So off diagonal, this is diagonal, right? These three are diagonal elements. Anything else other than the diagonal are zero. So in other words, the non-zero elements are sitting on the diagonal. Even this one is diagonal because uh, because it, it it has at least one non-zero element along the diagonal. Well, I'm sorry, this has to be zero. Okay, so even this is zero and this is sitting on the diagonal, we still call this diagonal because it has at least at least one non-zero element along the diagonal. All right. Um, okay, upper triangular matrix and um, identity matrix. Identity matrix is a matrix whose diagonal is all one. Like you want, if I want to make this identity identity matrix, uh, let's see. Yes, so uh, then I should get one and one along the diagonal. Everywhere else should be zero. So this is called diagonal matrix of a three by three. Diagonal matrix can have different dimensions. It can have four, four, five, five, six, six, but it has to be square. You cannot have a identity matrix of you know two by three. That that is not possible. It has to be same number of rows and columns. Again, on the diagonals, you get one. Everywhere else, you get zero. That is identity matrix. Upper triangular matrix is a matrix um, whose elements below the diagonal is zero. <clears throat> so I want to make this upper triangular matrix just that. You know, this is upper triangular matrix. Why? Because elements below the diagonal is zero. I don't care about above the diagonal even i have two the two non two zeros here this doesn't change the condition the condition should be below the diagonal these two and this one these three should be zero for this thing to be called um upper triangular matrix okay upper triangular matrix means below the diagonal is non as zero so it's a bit tricky right so you call it upper but then you talk about below elements. Now we have in the opposite case where the lower triangular matrix has elements above the diagonal zero. So hopefully this is not confusing, okay? So you have to have zero above the diagonal. Below the diagonal can be either zero or non-zero. We don't care. It's above the diagonal. That makes uh, the matrix upper or lower triangular matrix. 
again these should be square matrices right because if it's if it's a rectangular matrix we don't have a diagonal like if i want to make if i if i make a uh rectangular matrix like this this is a two by four right two rows four columns there is no diagonal diagonal should be you know if 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 you think of this as a diagonal oops this and this then um, this doesn't hit the other corner so diagonal should start from one corner and go to the other corner and if you do this if you just say hey i have this guy and that guy then this is not connected you have to have like exactly like chessboard right chessboard is square you can have a diagonal other than that you cannot have diagonal and you cannot write a diagonal for a rectangular matrix all right mid uh matrix multiplication so I think the best way to, to, to talk about this is look at an example. So here's a matrix. I have two matrices. I'm going to multiply them together. Let's say I'm going to multiply A by B. Okay. So A is a 4 by 3. And this is 3 by 2. Right? 3 rows, 2 columns. I'm going to multiply A by B. So the way to multiply it is you get the row of the first. You multiply by the column of the second. And that gives you the corresponding element. So row 1 times column 1 of B. So row one of, of matrix A times column one of matrix B gives you the one, one element. So let's multiply this. So four times one plus three times minus two plus two times three. What is it? So that is about four, right? So here's four, it's sitting in one, one element. Let's say if I multiply th the third row here times the second column here, so this this gives you the third the three two entry of the resultant matrix three two so three two would be this guy right row three column two so the result should be minus two let's see i'm going to multiply this by that so zero times minus three is zero minus one times two is minus two and then zero times four is zero so the overall is minus two because when you add them up only this one survives with a negative sign so the result is minus 2, and it's sitting in row 3, column 2 of the result matrix, which is this guy. Let's do another uh, calculation. I'm going to multiply this row by the first column. So that is fourth row of A times the first column of B. So it should give me the entry 4, 1 of the result matrix, right? 4, because it's sitting in row 4 of column A, and it's column first column of column B. So that's why it's 4, 1. So this times that, minus 1 times 1, minus 2 times 2, so total is minus 5 so far, and then plus 2 times 3 is 6, so minus 5 plus 6 is plus 1, and that should be this entry. You see that? It's row 4, column 1 of the resultant matrix. So that's how we multiply A times B. Um, let's calculate one more thing. Let's say A times Y transpose. So this is A times Y transpose. You have to flip this right as a column fashion and then multiply so let's calculate the third row here times there's only one column in y transpose right when you transpose it you get a column fashion vector so um, row three times that column gives you zero times minus zero times one is zero minus one times minus two you get plus two and zero times three gets zero so total is two and that will be sitting on row three in column one so row three column one is this guy which is plus two that's what we calculated all right so so this is matrix multiplication i hope this is useful thanks a lot for watching stay tuned for the next video on uh, the rest of the operations in matrix environment including matrix determinant and uh, basically be able to do all this in Excel. All right, so stay tuned and thanks for watching.